Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we're going to be checking out Turbo Dork's Expansion 5 color range, as well as Rainbow Roll, Redone and Improved. <laughs> Besides the rainbow roll, we have 12 paints. Like their other paints, they have a suggested base color written on the side of the bottle. And unlike the video where I painted 70 of them all over a black base coat for this expansion, I followed their specific directions and chose what I thought would be good undercoats for these metallics. I put all of these paints through the airbrush, but you can also paint them by hand. And for anyone still learning airbrushing, I wouldn't suggest that you use these particular paints as airbrush paints because these are on the thicker side. And if you don't know your airbrush well or the consistency you'll need well, you may find them difficult to use properly. They aren't exaggerating when they say they should be applied in three to five layers, while some you can get away with just one or two, depending on the paint and the undercoat. The first one is called Turbo, and I used Pixie Pink Air from the Army Painter. This paint is so thin that what goes underneath it will really matter. So if you want a deep pink, put a deep pink under. If you want a pale pink, put a white underneath it. And the more glossy the undercoat your paint is, the more reflective your Turbo Pink will be. The second one is called Dork. Yes? They did that and I love it. Now the paint underneath was this beautiful sapphire gem air from the Army Painter, which is vibrant alone, but the metallic sheen that is sky blue in color is so pretty and I think this will go very prettily over white as well. The third one is apple seed, and underneath it I put Savage Green Air by the Army Painter. I did use all Army Painter undercoats because I love their coverage and I only wanted to do a single layer of undercoating to save some time painting all of these. But of course, any color that you like will do. The apple seed is really pretty green. I think wizards and dragons when I see it, or maybe the dew on grass if you dry brush it across the tops of a grass tuft of a similar color. Also gemstones, if you follow the color with a good layer of gloss varnish to really make that gemstone pop. The next color to show you is orange you glad, and it is taking the place of hot commodity, as I mentioned before, which is going out of print. So if you spot hot commodity and want it, this will be your last chance. Orange You Glad will create a soft gold over white or peach, and over this color, which was Incursion Orange Air, it makes a very orangey yellow metallic. I'd have to put a darker orange or a brown underneath for something more realistically gold, I suppose, but this would make for some fine bling. And you could always use two tones of orange to give it highlights and shadows, increasing the realism very easily. This next color is a leafy green metallic called Summoning Cygnus, which is going to replace the color Sifu going out of print, and I chose to put Summoning Sickness over Feral Green Air from the Army Painter. This could definitely go over a black as well, which would give it a slightly more golden green tone to it. It's really pretty with a slight jade hue in it, I think, and I know I'll find all kinds of ways to use it. Aging copper with just a hint of this would probably look really good, and I'm going to have to try that in the future. Okay, so the next three I'm going to show you have asked for a black undercoat specifically, and I used Vallejo's Premium Black Candy to turn the black primer into a satin gloss finish. This first one is called Siberia, and I get it. It's a very deep, dark blue that from a distance will look black until the light hits it and you see a midnight blue that I I can't help but just stare at it, it's so pretty. I could see this being used for bug carapaces, or stealth spaceships, or dragon scales. To add a little highlight to this, just edge highlight with any of the other blues Turbodork has, nice and subtly at first, though you don't have to be too careful since these are transparent and potentially will need multiple layers just to be seen anyway. All of these over black will be quite subtle, so build up to what you want it to look like. This next color is pretty close to Siberia in color and is called Cold Open. Where Siberia is a blue with purple tones, this one is a blue with turquoise tones. And I think this would look really great over just turquoise as well. It's quite subtle, but again, when the light hits it, you get to see such pretty little sparkles of turquoise and blue. This next color, among my favorites of the expansion, is called Galaxia and it's a dark purple. It's 
sinister and beautiful. And I think it would go great over a silver metallic as well, which would make it a lot brighter than over black. But I do love it over black. If you were going to highlight the black so you could apply the color after highlights, I think a silver or soft gold gently placed, no overly harsh lines, would look really nice. Now this one called Hotline was suggested that it go over white, but I'm not certain whether it was just because of how transparent a pink it is, but it didn't seem to want to cover the white at all, so rather than keep trying and make the model too thickly covered, I decided to focus on its cloak in this case. I think it would be much better if it were over a pink, so it wouldn't be trying to cover as much than it is over white alone. But I imagine you won't have that much difficulty using it by hand. I'm not certain. I do think that pink, like even the pixie pink I used for the other one, would be your better choice than pure white. But it is a really pretty color. Just very thin. Much like these next three paints. They were suggested to go over white, over black, or over zenith white to black, so I went zenith white to black. And now I see that on the bottle, the top color is what you would expect over white, the bottom is what you can expect over black, and when you combine the two, after three layers of paint, thin layers as always, you get this interesting effect. I really think this effect would shine with a high gloss undercoat, or at least glossier than I used, so I cannot stress enough that a gloss undercoat can really bring out these colors. This one is called Fay Wilds, and is pink over white, but turquoise over black. But with enough layers, it looks more like a silver, and they're standing under a setting sun. I'm not sure what I think about this paint yet. I'll have to play around with it more. I was curious what it looked like over a silver metal, so I did that. But the effect is quite mild, with a lot more of a tint to pink than to turquoise. So if you wanted it subtly, use a gloss black and a zenithal highlighted silver metal like Duraluminum as a starting point. Now Duraluminum is a more reflective paint than this one, so this turbo dark paint slightly dims the Duraluminum. But I do like the slightly pink tone. I might use it on something, I just haven't figured out what yet. And I may go less white and more black in the future. Next we have Hemogoblin, and I have no idea where I would use this color. But it is interesting! With a soft orange over white and a green tinted metal over black, this may look very nice over a copper color, but like Feywilds, you want to create a stark contrast between light and dark if you want to see both colors on the model. Over Duraluminum, you can barely sense any green and get more of a golden hue. It's nice, very subtle, but nice. Makes the cold silver of the Duraluminum look aged, though again, it isn't as reflective as Duraluminum is itself, so it takes away from that feature. Last of the new ones is called Romeo and Juliet, and this one is more subtle of the three transitional paints, with a pink when over white and a purple when over black. I would consider just using black, since I personally prefer the purple, or just use white if you prefer the pink. This one you really need to make the white and black quite stark, to see the difference at all once the multiple layers of Romeo and Juliet are applied. I think I'd probably go for more black. And lastly, we return to the Rainbow Roll, which is much more obvious than the previous form. I tried a bunch of different ways to try and get that Rainbow Roll to reveal itself, and I'm glad that they brought it all back and then redid it. After three layers over a black glossy undercoat, you can really see the sparkles of changing colors. It is quite unlike anything I've seen before. It's pretty lovely. Again, it won't look like anything but black from a distance, but add Rainbow Roll in at least three coats to various dark colors and you have an eye-catching little creation. Once you get a bit closer. It really works best on flat surfaces. So I'm thinking a spaceship, or mech, or long flowing robes. You could umph up some dragon, or fairy wings as well. It would be very muted on any lighter colors, but if you wanted a subtle effect, it would be just visible. And of course you can bring out the effect with gloss. 
but maintaining even a satin sheen to the miniature allows the model's sparkles to shine. And that is all of them. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe if you haven't already because it helps me out and I hope I have helped you out. If you had any questions whatsoever, make certain to uh, comment in the description below right down there, down there. And I will get back to you as soon as possible and I will catch you in the next video. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Bye! Thank you very much to all our patrons around the world. I wouldn't be able to have nearly as much fun without your help. I really appreciate it and I hope you all have a fantastic day. Today this is the USS Sword and Steel. Okay, bye.